Dakota, an 8 to 12-man base featuring a wide-gap China wall, three walls to open core, and the best shooting floor I've ever made. Before the tour, don't forget to check out howard.gg. Make sure to claim your 350 cents when you use my code CROW in your daily case to win up to $2,000 every day. They have many games such as Jackpot, Coin Flip, and The Wheel. Their shop has every skin available to withdraw, and for a limited time, you get a 40% bonus when depositing with crypto or gift cards. So click my link in the description, and remember, 18s and above only. Running in through the compound gates, with an airlocked entrance, which is completely unladderable. The outer compound is protected by 12 turrets, covering all angles. And next, is the upkeep of the externals. There are six in total, and as the base is symmetrical on three sides, Every other TC has the same upkeep, so I'll show you the other ones now. And of course, all externals are disconnectable, which I'll demonstrate during the build. Enter the main compound through one of the six defendable gatehouses, with peaks looking both in and out. This base has a china wall built into the wide gap, which wraps around the entire base. I chose to add this instead of a regular china wall, as it's much cheaper and easier to build. Access the china wall through one of six entrances. There are even six dedicated bedrooms built in. As you can see, it offers some fantastic angles to peek from, with turrets protecting the parameter. The base itself benefits from six different entrances. There are three like this, with breach peaks on both sides, and chutes leading up to the roof. On the second floor, we have a peak overlooking the shell. On the third floor, we find a basic early game shooting floor. Jumping up again, you can access the open core peaks and the shooting floor. The other three chutes also have breach peaks. These are great for early game and can be used for retaking your china. Jump up to the second floor where we have more peaks overlooking the shell. On the third floor, there's an ankle biter peak into the open core. There are even two double bedrooms on either side. We have the main early game wide gap on this floor too. Perfect for defending the base and taking Halley before it's complete. Dropping back down to the shell, we have six turrets built into the walls, covering every angle. Enter the starter through the airlock. Although compact, this will give you enough space to get going and expand faster. Here's the main TC upkeep, which can hold over a day of materials. In the tutorial, I'll show an optional TC placement to give more loot storage if you prefer. Ultimately, this base is for a dedicated 8 or 9 man, but when finished, it has enough beds for at least 12 players, so it's perfect if your team play in shifts, or if you want to bag a few friends but onlines. Jump up to the next floor to access the open core. In here, you can fit around 50 large boxes, which is more than enough given that large boxes are now a third bigger. This open core benefits from three turrets between the ramps, and a further six located behind the ramps, making them very tricky to destroy. A space for level 3 and two vendings in the middle too. At the back, we have a bedroom on all three sides for the most dedicated players. Jump up here to access the main open core beaks, which cover every angle. Around the centre, we also have peaks looking back onto the roof. So these double bedrooms are possibly my favourite part of the base. There are six on this floor, all with nasty retakes that look straight into the open core, and a peek on the side to take back your shooting floor.
running out through the wide gap, we have peaks that overlook both the compound and back down into a china wall. I also included these lowered ramps, which give great forward visibility. Drop down here to use the single door peaks or the breach peaks looking back towards the base. And jump up here to use the roof retake and exit. Although essentially a different footprint, the wide gap on these sides offer the same great angles to defend from. Complete with more ramps, drop down peaks, and the roof retake and exit. Built into the jump up, we have another shooting floor and roof peak. Exit onto the roof through the airlock. You'll find two other roof exits on the other sides. In the centre of the roof, we have a platform, built especially for a scrappy to land on as seen in the intro. We also have three double bedrooms on the roof, complete with lockers. The edges of the roof benefit from these half-height window peaks, mirrored on all sides. And lastly, with the build cost and upkeep, around half the cost of my biggest base, the Jupiter, but still with three walls to open core, Hard to achieve at this price point, which is why I went for the egg core over a regular circle one. And if you're ready to build a base, why not subscribe and join my Discord in the description so you can keep up to date with all my latest concepts. Before each section of the build, I'll show you a step by step like this just to give you a better overview of what's going on. For the footprint, first lay down a triangle. Put squares on either side and then fill in the gaps with more triangles. Now surround with walls, leaving a gap on one of the right hand triangles for the entrance. Then seal in the roof. Place the triangles like this first as to mitigate the triangle splash bug. More information in the description. Place a frame in this spot for the jump up, then the squares. Build a half wall and a low wall next to the door here as the airlock peak. It's up to you whether you want to place a triangle or furnaces here for the jump up. Before placing the TC, place a wall here. Seal the TC in with a single door frame and a metal door for now, upgrading to an armoured one later. Placing the TC here makes it more doors to TC, but you can get more loot space if you place it in this square here, like so. Of course, remember to lock it, otherwise there's no point in having externals. Then place door frames in these locations and place triangle floors at half height for the shelves. Then add more wall frames and doors. And upgrade the TC room to HQM when you can. Jump up to the next floor to build an airlock and the rest of the second floor. You can place boxes or a turret on this half tight shelf later. After that, surround with walls and seal in the roof in the same way as we did the ground floor, but this time leave a gap in one of the squares for the jump up to the open core. As you can see, the gap will go just above where the TC is downstairs. They build a loop room on either side. You can fit a locker here with two beds. You can use a single door instead if you prefer. Then jump up to the third floor where we're going to build the open court entrance. This will serve as your roof exit for now. This window is important as it will be an open court peak later. Place half walls where shown. Then another window and a door. This looks kind of awkward now, but it works really well when you want to defend your open core. Next, going to wall stack the base on all six sides and build the externals. 
As this kind of footprint is symmetrical on three sides, I'll be using three-way symmetry throughout the build from now on, just to make the video a bit quicker. If you're at all confused, make sure to check out the Sanctuary code in the description or my Discord for extra help. But of course I try my best to make sure everything is as clear as possible. But for wall stacking, we need to add some foundations to the base. So make sure to put a triangle on the other side of every square. Then between each one, place two squares. When the footprint is finished, it should look something like this. But well, actually exactly like this. Otherwise, you will mess the base up. For the first wall stack, position yourself between two of the squares. Place a triangle in the middle and then build out by eight squares. After the eighth square, place a triangle. Then remove all the squares. Then from this triangle, place a series of 16 triangles in half moon shapes towards the base. And when you get to this point, place a square, upgrading it to metal. Then remove the entire buildup of twig. Of course that square isn't connected to an external yet. So next place down two twig squares and two metal ones, raising the final one. This is very important for the external TC mechanism to work. Then place another twig square, a metal square, a triangle and build your external TC. On the right hand side build a compartment for the battery. Then seal in the rest of the TC housing like so. Place a twig ramp inside the housing. Then place a raised one on the twig square outside, upgrading it to metal. You can now remove the twig underneath. Now the foundations are connected to the external. If in the case of a raid and you want to replace your main TC, you need to remove the twig ramp inside. To reconnect, just replace the twig ramp. This works as the two ramps actually connect together through the wall. For the next part, we need to permanently connect these foundations together. So remove the twig, build a wall frame and a wall on this side. And on this side, place a raised triangle foundation with a window on top. Then place two wall frames connecting the window to the wall. Now everything is finally connected together. When you're happy with that, repeat this step twice more around the base in these locations. If you like, you can refer back to the animation at the start of the section for more clarity. Now we need to wall stack again on the other three sides. So position yourself here and build up by seven squares. Not eight this time, seven. And put a triangle on the end. Then remove all the squares again. Then from the final triangle, build back towards the base with a series of 16 triangles yet again. In half moon shapes, of course. Then place an extra triangle on the left, upgrading these three to metal. Then remove the entire build up. Now again, these triangles aren't connected to external, so now place down three twig squares. Then one metal one and one raised metal one. And in the same way as we did before, place a twig square, a metal square, and your external TC. I'm going to speed this part up as it's exactly the same as we just did. Now the external is secure, we need to connect all these foundations together permanently. So on the three triangles, place a wall frame and a wall. Upgrading to metal. Then next to it, place a twig wall, a half wall, a triangle, and this will enable you to place a square frame on the opposite side at a half height. As we did before, place a raised triangle foundation here and surround it with a hexagon of lower triangles. Then build two wall frames in the center. 
then connect all the foundations together with a window and the two square floor frames. Now everything is connected together permanently, so we can go ahead and delete the twig build up here and place a triangle in front of these foundations to make the mobility in and out of the base a bit better. And when you're happy with that, repeat this step twice more on the opposite sides of the base as shown in the beginning of the external part of this section. Next, head over to the raised foundations where we're going to build the gatehouses. These are exactly the same on all six sides of the base, so just repeat this on all sides, obviously. These gatehouses are pretty standard stuff by now, so just watch the video. You can place ramps here to make going in and out of the gatehouses a little bit easier. And where you place these half walls, we will put turrets. When all the gatehouses are complete, we can build the compound. For the compound, start off by making sure you are next to the hexagon part of the wide gap and then place a wall that's exactly straight against the gatehouse on both sides. Do this again on the other opposite gatehouses. Now on these gatehouses, make sure the wall is slightly pointing inwards and then seal in the gap. Obviously this isn't perfect, but it doesn't really matter. Oh, and if you're using stone walls, then the placement might be slightly different, but don't blame me. Wood walls just make sense as the early defense as using stone is kind of a waste at this point. And when you've sealed in the entire compound, place wood triangles against the externals like so to make it easier to jump up. But don't try and be clever and place another one here as you will break the disconnecting mechanism. Then jump on top of the external and build the windmill towers. Sorry for using no clip here, but I'm not using ladders to climb all the way up. Since the latest patch, you can't remove the triangles from underneath the windmills anymore. And right here, I'm placing the barricades on top of the gatehouses. Just to clarify, we place the windmills now so you can get your compound turrets up as quickly as possible so you can smelt safely. Now we're going to build the shell. This will be done in sections to make it easier for you to follow the tutorial as of course I'm using symmetry. And after that, we're going to be adding the early game wide gap peaks so you can defend the base as early as possible. To start off, add a square on the side of these triangles. Then build the breach peak. And do the same on the opposite side. Then build walls inside, making sure that they are upgraded to metal, with a window here as a peak. Then place full frames at the breach peaks and seal in the roof. Then add more wall frames and doors in the center. Place a twig square here temporarily to jump up. And then place the roofs for the breach peaks. Then place frames here, seal them in, and build the peaks into the shell. Then build more walls here with an entrance to the peaks to the shell. Then place a twig square here, a twig triangle, and then a jump up on the opposite side. Make it metal as it's difficult to replace later. Next add half walls on top of the breach peaks and seal them in. and then seal the rest of the roof. Then add more wall frames for stability and as many doors as you like.
Then jump up onto the third floor, seal in the peak and build an airlock. With a frame here for stability. This wall will form part of the open core later, so it should be metal and with the hard side facing you. Then build twig here to build the jump up inside the airlock. When you're happy with that, build this again on the opposite three sides of the base, as shown. Next we're going to build the entrances and chutes on these square foundations, to so put a triangle on either side, then build the breach peaks. These should be metal to cover gaps in the shell caused by the multi-TC footprint, as I'll show now. Obviously these walls should be backwards, so the conditional model covers the gap. Now place a ceiling and triangle frames on either side to uh, strengthen the breach peaks. Then place a twig triangle to jump up to the next floor. Now you can place the roofs to finish the breach peaks. Now place frames here, a triangle, and more frames and the window. Now extend the walls up to the second floor. Then I jump up on both sides with garage doors. Extend the jump ups to the next floor to add as your roof entrance for now. Then seal in the second floor. Leave a gap in the middle to drop down, seal it in, and then build the turret pots. Then and a couple more garage doors underneath to make a door raid more expensive. And when you're happy with that, complete this step on the other two sides of the base, as again I showed in the initial step-by-step -step animation thingy. Now the shell is more secure, we're going to build the early game shooting floor. So make sure you're on the hexagon side of the base and put two squares on either side with wall frames going up to the second floor. Repeat this step on the opposite sides and then build the early game shooting floor from the single triangle part here, extending it by two triangles on either side of the raised one and extending the frames up by two floors. Again repeat this step on the opposite sides of the base. Complete the early game on these sides by placing triangle frames, a triangle floor in the middle and sealing it with walls. Obviously you can put a locker in the middle if you like. And don't forget the garage door in the wall frame, like I did. Then you can seal in the early game shooting floor for more protection. So when you finish this one, build two more on the opposite sides, and then we will go ahead and build the other early game shooting floor right here. For this side, I think it's best to attach the triangles to the base and the square to the wide gap for the best peaks. Then you can seal it in with walls, or you can put a window in the middle with a ramp. It's up to you, but the walls are obviously stronger than a window. And seal the top with floors, attaching to the base. This way you have a peak to take the heli early game, which is nice. Seal these peaks with the door, and repeat this step on the opposite three sides of the base, as shown. Now we're going to build the open core, 
As with the shell, this will be done in sections to make it easier for you to follow. First, we're going to mirror this peak on the opposite two sides to make the base more symmetrical. Place half walls here with a ramp in the middle so you can place loot boxes on them. If you're having trouble placing the ramps, that's because there are boxes or something else underneath on the floor below, so you need to remove that first. When all three sides look the same, place more half walls here with furnaces in between the gaps. To do this, you should place a twig frame first, then the furnaces. But for now, I'm just going to seal it in with twig. Now on the sides of the base with this type of early game shooting floor, we're going to expand the chutes. To do this, place two layers of walls here with a half wall on the side. Then here place two metal walls. Then seal on the top with a floor. Place a wall frame and a half height floor in between. Then attach a triangle to the wall frame. You can put boxes here with the help of a ladder. Then seal in the roof at this height. Add more wall frames for stability. And as many doors as you like. And then seal in this part, making sure it's metal, not armored. Seal the ceiling and place a triangle floor frame here. Then jump up to the next floor and complete the rest of the chutes with a full wall in the middle. A window here. A square floor frame and a low wall for the bedroom peaks. Then do the same on this side. Then seal in the ceiling. And here you should actually add a half wall and a low wall, not the window, because it actually gives better peaks. Then add more wall frames to add stability. And walls either side here, making sure the hard side is facing you as they form the open core loot rooms. And then they jump up here to the next floor where the open core peaks will be. Seal in the roof with a triangle floor frame in the jump up again for stability. And this is what the shoot should look like when it's completely finished. You could in fact build the open core in a different order to suit you, but I'm doing it this way as it makes it easier for the tutorial. After that, repeat this step on the other two sides of the base. Before building the open core loop rooms, we need to extend these chutes here. Make sure to put a half wall and a window here for the shooting floor peak. This wall here and the wall underneath should be HQM, so both loot rooms can't be splashed at the same time. And repeat the step on the other two sides. Now to put the two loot rooms. Place two full walls here and on the other side. Then a full wall in the middle and on the other side. Place two half walls on top and seal them in. to make the floors HQM as soon as you can. You can place a ramp at the bottom to make the boxes easier to access, but you can actually fit one more box underneath if you don't use them. Then place twig squares with a triangle through the wall to place this triangle at half height. Then place a square here for more loot space. Again, repeat this step on the other two sides of the base in exactly the same way. When 
happy with that, jump up to the next floor and build the ramp peaks. First place a triangle here, and then the floor frame in this location, not attaching to the triangle in the middle, then the ramps. You can shoot out this twig triangle in the honeycomb and seal it in. After that, repeat this step on all three sides of the base to complete all the open core peaks. Next, jump back down to the open core, place wall frames all around and seal in the roof. Use ladders to place a turret between the two ramps. Now I'll show you how to place the level 3 and 2 vending machines in the middle, so just watch carefully. Next we're going to build the 5th floor of the base. Again this is done in sections just as the parts before, so when I build something, repeat it on the opposite side. First we're going to build the shooting floor exits next to the bedrooms. So place a full wall here and a half wall on top of the window. Then another full wall here, making sure it's metal. We could put a shelf inside to hold two boxes, which we'll do later when we do the shooting floor. Do this part again on the other side. Then seal in the roof and place a window and a door frame. After completing this step, do it again on the other two sides as shown. Now to extend these chutes and build the other shooting floor entrances. On top of the window place a low wall, then a half wall here with a window on top. Then place a wall frame, a triangle at half height, then a triangle frame. On the other side of the door we build a battery compartment. So seal it in with metal walls and place a wall frame. Make sure the garage door is facing with the roller towards you to seal gaps in the roof. And this triangle should be attached to this wall to seal more gaps in the roof. The final gap in the ceiling can be closed with a garage door. Just make sure the roller is facing away from you and obviously the garage door will be kept open at all times. Its only function is to seal the gap in the roof. Then do the same again for this side. We don't need to worry about the gaps so much as the half height triangle here will protect these turret. Lastly place a wall frame here with probably a garage door actually to make the rain cost a bit higher. Again repeat this step on the other two sides of the base in exactly the same way. Now in the center place a metal wall facing towards you, another one beside it, half height walls and triangles on top. Do this again on the other two sides then place a window in the center with an abrasure. Next, place half height walls in the middle and seal in the roof. But before you do that, put ramps down here so you can put boxes underneath. The ramps just make the boxes easier to access. Now the center of the roof is sealed, we're going to place wall frames around the edge of the open core peaks and seal in the roof completely. Make sure to place doors to make raid costs higher and also so raiders can't gain full control of this floor. Next place more wall frames here. After you've placed wall frames all around the top floor, it's time to seal it in. 
So place triangles in these locations, making sure these two attach to the outer part of the base, and this one attaches to the core to seal any gaps. For this part, just attach two squares either side of the triangle, make sure the triangle attaches to the square that you're standing on to cover any gaps. Repeat this all around the roof to finish the fifth floor. And after that, I recommend finishing the roof exits. Put a window frame in the middle to act as another peak, and another window frame on the other side where we'll put vending machines. You can put them there now if you like, but for some reason I decided to put them later when we finish the rest of the roof. On the opposite side here, we have a turret pod. Repeat this step on the other two sides of the base to complete the roof exits. Next we're going to be the Wagat shooting floor and the china wall. We'll begin by building the china wall and the frames that hold up the shooting floor and then finish the shooting floor like so. On these sides of the base with the squares attached to the hexagon, add a triangle on either side. Then build triangle roofs either side of the raised triangle with a half height wall and a window. Then here put another window with a half height wall on top. Then here we'll put two stone wall frames with a door and two metal frames on the inside. Add another two metal frames here for better stability. And do the same on this side. And don't forget to place your turret here. Then add a row of half walls in the center above each wall frame. Repeat this part on the other three sides of the base, like so. Then we're going to build the wide gap from these parts of the base that don't have these square foundations. So we build up by a triangle and a square on each side removing the twig triangle afterwards. Again, place the roof and then a half height wall and a window. Next, place window frames all around the bedroom. You can use walls if you prefer or put windows in the window frames. It's up to you. Also, you can put half height walls on top of the bedroom and raise the ceiling so you can place some boxes for a better respawn. But as you have boxes all over your wide gap floor, I don't know if it's that useful. Again, it's up to you. Oh, and don't forget to make the wall frame metal and the half wall on top metal as this will be a structural part of the wide gap. And just as before, put half height walls on top of each window. When you've done one side, repeat this step on the other two sides of the base to complete the china wall and wide gap foundations. Next, jump down from the fifth floor to complete the wide gap. Use twig triangles to act as scaffolding so you don't fall down. Here, extend the wall frames by two floors. Then place another twig square and extend these. Then put more wall frames in the center, making sure the middle one is metal. Then you can delete part of the twig, jump up to the next floor, and shoot out the rest of the twig. Next build more twig scaffolding and place three triangle frames at the front. 
and build a half wall and two single door frames either side. Place on the doors now because it make it easier. Place two half walls in the middle for stability and floors on top. Seal this part in with windows and then delete the triangles. Place a square floor here on either side for the ramps and then some more wall frames on this part. Then use the square to jump up to the next floor and place the floors here. Complete the central part with two layers of windows all around. Then put wall frames in the center for stability. Some triangle floors to jump up on. Another window on either side. A half height floor. And then the triangle roofs. And then the roof exit. And the pickup with some more frames for stability. Then seal in the top. In front of the squares, place windows. Then a floor frame and the ramp. Then another triangle here and another window. Again, build more wall frames in these locations for stability for the roof. Next, in the floors and the ceiling out from the base. And this is what the wide gap should look like when it's finished. Again, repeat this step on the other three sides of the base. Now to extend the other wide gaps, these are the ones with the smaller early game shooting floor. After placing scaffolding, extend these wall frames up by two floors. Then the ones in the centre by one floor. Remove some of the twig and then jump up to the next floor. Then shoot out the build up. As with the other side, place triangle floors and frames here, upgrading the frames to metal. A half height floor and two single door frames with doors, floors and the half height walls underneath for stability. Now to your right and left, build a square floor. Seal in the ceiling from this angle. Now complete this tower in exactly the same way as the others, so I'm just going to shut up for a bit and let you watch. Now this part is slightly different on this side. So, place a triangle attaching to the base. Then a twig half wall and a twig floor so we can place the shelf inside the bedrooms. Then remove the twig and do the same on the other side. Place a wall frame so you can't fall out of the wide gap and a ceiling.
Plex placed wall frames here for stability and sealing the rest of the roof. Remember to place doors around your wide gap so radius can't gain control of the entire thing. And of course, repeat the step on the other three sides of the base. And finally, we can complete the roof. First, build the roofs on all corners of the base. This can be done by placing a twig square as scaffolding. Then remove the twig square and place all the roofs. All the roofs are square roofs, not triangle roofs. But you can experiment with this if you think you know better. When you've placed all the roofs around the outskirts of the base, now it's time to build the bedrooms. And as you can see here, I've got the window peak as shown in the tour. So place a window on the right hand side if you want to. To fit two beds and a locker in here, you must place the locker first, a bed against this back wall and another bed here. Garage door roller must be facing outside. Do this again on the other two sides to complete all three bedrooms. If you haven't already, place your vending machines here. Obviously you need to remove the window first. Then build the scrappy parking spot in the center. After that, build windmill towers. You need to build wall frames on both sides to get them tall enough. These ones will connect to the batteries in the fifth floor. Then I recommend placing SAM sites on top of each bedroom. And don't forget to place your turrets in these locations. Lastly, we're going to build the second compound to the base. Start off by building the turret pods. Do this on all six sides of the base, of course. Then before placing the triangle roofs, place your stone gate. Of course, making sure the gates will open inwards. Then attach triangle roofs here to make sure it's unladderable. Then seal in the gaps with more stone walls. Obviously this will depend on the terrain that you're building on, but make sure that you watch this carefully, otherwise you won't be able to fit the wall in the centre. Repeat this on all six sides of the base until the compound is complete. And when finished, it should look something like this. Congratulations, you finished the base. And if you made it this far, make sure to leave a comment, like the video and subscribe. I have some really unique and exciting gameplay videos planned, so make sure you join my Twitch and my Discord so you don't miss out. Cheers.